Well, great to be back outside on the grass. Beautiful day for football, and guys did a good job. Uh, there's a lot of uh, guys running around. A lot of guys got their first day of college football in today. It was good to see Micah Crowell playing again, you know, coming back from his injury. Chase Hatley out there playing for the first time. So, you know, Zion Reeves, some guys that didn't play last year that were on the team, and then our mid-year guys that are here getting them out there. And, and then like you'd expect, you know, seeing Devin Leary throw the ball to Devin Carter and seeing how that looks. Grant Gibson, you know, the communication on the O-line defense, having all these guys back. So it was a great first day. Obviously, we're not hitting yet, but uh, the install was pretty clean. Were you were you pleased with how fast the guys were moving because on the first day? Yeah, I think some of it's good. You know, I think we're in different phases. You know, you have the older players where you're criticizing them for a one inch false step because that's where they're at. You know, and then you have the younger guys that have no idea what they're doing, and you know, that's analysis by uh, paralysis by analysis for them. And, so, you know, you're coaching guys that are in different parts of their career right now on day one. And, and some of them, like Devin Carter is a great example, Shy Battle, they're, they're out there uh, in their fourth spring ball, you know. So things are routine, they're flying around, they're in great shape. And then you have the young guys like, what, what period is it? Where am I going? What did he say? You know, it's like, <laughs> we're coaching all of it, you know. And so you can't really give the team a grade because you got guys in different places on that. You mentioned Mike Crowell and Chase Hatley, both of them switching positions now at this point. How receptive were they to that? And what was the thought process going behind that? Both of them were open to it. You know, I think that like most people, they want to play. Uh, they've seen what's happened here with their bodies. You know, they're filled out. They're both big kids that have filled in nicely. And it gives them a better opportunity, you know, with uh, the frame that they have to play in that role and, and do things for us earlier in their career because of that. How do you go about managing the expectations day one and yeah. kind of get these guys to understand that this specific team hasn't actually accomplished anything yet? Yeah, I think every team's that way. And, and for us, it's more about, you know, postseason, people talking about our next season like that, you know, and it's just a different uh, mindset as far as coming back. You, you just can't be complacent. You have to remember, we didn't win the ACC. We had a really good season. A lot of those guys are back, but they want to be better than they were. And so they carry that chip on their shoulder particularly with how our season finished. You know, there's a lot of big chip on our shoulder to get back on the grass and play again. Speaking specifically of the uh, skill positions, are you, are you looking forward to the competition that's going to be taking place there to see who can be that number one guy at this position and that position? Yeah, at every position, you know. I mean, it's not just who's going to win the starting job. You're looking at who's in, you know, if the starter's not. Because as we all know, you're only guaranteed the next play and then you don't know what's going to happen. You know, every day you're out here as a football player, you know, you're, you're one play away from being out. And, and so we have to get the next center ready, you know, get the next quarterback ready, the next this. And then there's positions that are open, you know, and so you're excited to see what's going to happen with the battle. And, and as you mentioned, the skill spots where there was a Mecca leaving, you know, and see how that takes over and, and how it progresses with Thayer and Porter in, in there at the same time. <clears throat> I think it's done in years with Army now. Speeds? What, yeah, what, what has gone into him at left tackle? And um, would McKay get a look there too, or is this basically Bryson's job to lose? No, I think, you know, Coach Garrison's always cross trained guys that are capable and, and getting Spees at that position so he can play it. You know, if Tim ends up there some, I wouldn't be surprised. Anthony Belton, you'll see there at Matten. So you got to get guys reps, and, and this is the best time, you know, to let them compete against good defensive linemen and see what they're, I guess you'd say, your best five and try to get him enough reps in different spots to see that. You're a lot about a red shirt, a lot of uh, freshman receivers, yeah. a lot of DBs, a lot of linemen. What, what have you kind of seen from them as they get in their stage of their careers where they actually get to play now? You know, uh, red shirting guys helps them a lot in, in a lot of ways. You know, I think the maturity aspect, uh, the ability to get in that weight room, get confident in your body to go out there and compete against a 22 year old guy at times. It's hard as an 18 year old, physically, mentally, emotionally, time management. So the red shirt year, I think is really good for their personal growth. It's hard for me to say how I've, I've seen them progress until we get pads on and start playing, but it, body wise, seen them progress quite a bit. How do you been made of uh, all the players who came back, but yeah. it's a big deal that for the second straight year, all the coaches are back. Yeah. How, how big is that for the program and moving forward? You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think continuity is really important. You know, these guys trust who's coaching them. Uh, they have relationships built. There's time invested from player to coach, coach to player. These coaches have recruited these guys into their rooms, you know, and, and I think all that plays into it. And 
you know, it'd be great if these guys left to be head coaches someday, right? And I would be fired up for them, but until that happens, we want to keep these guys together. It's a great staff. We have great chemistry together. Our wives have great chemistry together. It's a family. And so, you know, I really am blessed to work with who I do. I think that's one of the things you guys would all agree with when you walk in the office and see coworkers that are also people you respect. Uh, they're great family men. You know, they do things the right way. It makes work different. It's not the same as work. You know, it's you get a lot of pride and joy out of going in there and seeing these guys every day. Sarah Jones, what kind of women's most things can you bring yeah. him on board? You know, just trying to gap the, the youth of our receiver room and the age of our receiver room. Obviously, the Thayer coming back and DC coming back you, you know, and Porter has played. You got three guys with experience. Everyone else is young. And so just getting one more older guy, losing CJ Riley and Emeka, we felt like would help that room. How do you approach uh, the running back position with the two guys you lost that were so key to you? Yeah, we just got to get them reps. You know, we trust Jordan and Delbert uh, DeMarcus. Those three guys have been here and we know what they're going to do. And now it's time to see what the two freshmen can do and, and get them in the mix. So it'll be those five that we ride with. And obviously in 14 days, I'll have a better picture of 14 practices of, of where we're at. And you think back to Icky at Providence Day. You know, what, what has this journey been like to, to now be a top five, maybe number yeah. one pick? Yeah, I see Mel Kuyper come out yesterday. Obviously, I have great respect for him and one of the, the guys that knows the draft as well as anybody to, to pick him as the first overall. is It's a great honor, you know, and I know that the combine and pro day and all these things, the interviews are going to take part in this and can shake things up. But Icky deserves all the recognition he's getting. He, he's a tremendous football player. He's a tremendous human being. and. You know, I remember the first time he walked in that building with his dad, you know, and seeing him. And I remember seeing him play live in a game and miss him, <laughs> you know, not having him on that field, man. That guy's, he's a guy that changes the temperature of the room, you know, he, he's got tremendous energy. Does this feel more normal? You know, we got all of us around here. I mean, yeah. does it feel kind of back to normal a little bit more? You know, after the last yeah, couple of years? Yeah, I think, you know, the other than the mask wearing you have to do in some places, things are pretty much back to normal. Um, People seem to have, you know, kind of settled in on what life is and treating it a little bit more like the common cold, I guess you'd say, is what you're saying. But, yeah, definitely normalizing. Yeah. If, if everyone's back on defense healthy, you know, cross your fingers, all that good stuff, is, is there a particular spot, maybe cornerback, where you'd like to see a little more depth emerge this spring? Or do you feel pretty good about what the defense could be? Yeah, I think so. You know, I, I'm excited to see Tayshawn Smith come back now. You know, he's been out for a while and, and played a little bit last year. But he's an experienced player that hasn't been healthy. And, and so to get him, you know, physically and mentally back out there would be big. You know, seeing the progression of Nate Evans at corner. Um, looking forward to seeing that. And obviously, I want to see Shy and Dariq compete and get better, you know, and, and work on the things they can work on. But Defensively, I think if you ask every coach, you're always trying to find who's your best 11 and then who's next, you know, because that 11, as you saw last year, changed seven times for us. We had seven starters out and the next man up was terrific. So it's very important that we're building that depth and that, that side of the football. You saw Peyton Wilson out there kind mm -hmm. of working along. What's those prospects with him uh, coming up? Yeah, Peyton's doing great. I mean, every hurdle he's passed and, and so going through the spring, continuing to get him back to where he needs to be ready for the summer, but he's fully cleared, you know, to do the things he's doing and excited for him. And really, really excited. He feels really good right now. How about Isaiah as well? Doing great. Yeah, same thing. Both those guys are on just a later timeline, you know, but they'll both be full speed for the summer. Is there a guy who you think benefited the most from being thrown into the action last year, maybe a little bit ahead of schedule? Uh, hmm. Good question. Maybe Chris Tootle, you know, I mean, he probably took advantage of his opportunity as good as anybody did last year and, and uh, went from really a guy that didn't play at all to a guy that impacted games, you know. When he's healthy, what, what kind of role do you expect for CJ Clark when he's back healthy? Yeah, I mean, CJ is a guy that obviously, you know, played nose guard last year. We're training him to be able to play both end to end nose so he can be a dual trained guy like Davin Van is and Corey Durden, so we can constantly rotate and get our best guys out there. So it's going to be a formidable group. You know, when you get him, C.J. Clark back, you get Corey Durden back, you know, there's going to be some guys with game experience with a lot of ability. I'm, I'm excited about the D-line rotation. You mentioned earlier. Finish up, the players are coming. 
Last one. You mentioned earlier how, how it's good to have all these players out here that have been through this process before, but how good is it to have your quarterback, Devin oh, yeah. Larry, who's that experienced or whatever the leader, he can be out there on the field for you? Yeah, I mean, for a head coach to have his starting quarterback back, one he truly uh, has had success with and believes in is a great thing. I mean, I sleep better at night because of that. Every coach will tell you that. And Devin's gonna, in a different place than he was 12 months ago. I'm really proud of him and excited for him. Uh, but, you know, for me personally and for every coach on our staff and for every coach in America, we all like having our starting quarterback back. You know? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach.